the, to show our devotion, like this combination of responsibility and and effortlessness. Uh, <coughs> I find quite interesting, and I couldn't really understand from what you're saying, like the process, how we can uh, woven the two together. <coughs> Uh, have you had a morning session? No, I, I haven't, but I got a brief So in the morning session, we have discussed in various aspects. Mm -hmm. So here, uh, psychologically, actually the, we have to understand, we have nothing to attain with the psychological world. So if you want to attain anything in the psychological world, that means we actually the psychological structure is one. There is no division in the psychological world. Uh, our uh, consciousness is one. There is no division. Actually, there is no division. But whenever we want to select something, this I want, this I don't want. Thereby, we divide our consciousness into two parts, and one part assumes the role to control the other. Actually, the basically it is one. But when we only because of our effort, we we make one part as I am, the other part as the object. One part as the subject and the other part as the object. Actually, there is actually there is no subject and object classification, but we artificially create the subject and object relationship within ourselves. So it is uh, it is the unnecessary classification. And we are unnecessarily struggling within ourselves as if we have really have some something to get, something to remove. But actually, there is nothing to retain, nothing to get. Actually, everything is in the flow. We cannot retain anything. Even, for example, if I place some material thing here, it will be here forever, unless any other person remove the thing from here. So it will be always there. But it is not the case in our psychological world. So all our feeling, all our emotion comes and goes naturally. The speed of each and emotion is uh, 60 emotions per second. That is the nature of our emotion and 60 thoughts per second. So that is the flowing stage of our mind. So there is no necessity to set anything permanently. So no permanent structure is possible. So it is moving, ever moving. So whenever we take some stand to deal with other thing, we are making unnecessary confusion in the psychological world. For example, some water is there, you write your name upon the water. So is there any necessity to wipe away some, for example, you write your name with some spelling mistake. And is there any necessity to wipe it out and write in correct way? Not necessary. Whenever you write, the next moment it will be you know, gone. It will be gone naturally. There is no necessity to wipe when you anything. So here, when you correct anything, when you wipe anything, some new marking will be formed. So here, psychologically, there is no necessity to correct anything. It will be uh, disappear naturally. So whenever we do something, there we are creating unnecessary struggle within ourselves. So psychologically we have to understand nothing to be attained, nothing to remove. So if you understand, the way we give total freedom to the psychological structure. When we give total freedom to the psychological structure, the entire psychological structure is in the flow. So that is the main thing we have to understand, we have to achieve. That is known as the liberation. Uh, mukti or uh, mosha, they are <coughs> de described like this. So this is this is nothing but the natural flow of our mind. So the natural flow of our mind is the liberation. So the original state of our mind is in the liberation. Only because of our effort, we are disturbing the liberation. So for which we have to understand, we have no work is needed. So for that we have to understand. But then if, if I have like a 60 uh, bad thoughts per second, so then and if, I, if I just let it happen and go, so then I become much more negative. So that is uh, different, but uh, I have to start from the beginning, okay. so we'll, we'll, we'll discuss later, <laughs> in some other day. 
or tomorrow you know, or tomorrow but uh, um, but we have we have come across many things in the morning itself and uh, and we will take the uh, take anything in the night tomorrow yeah one of the you talking about the great masters talking about atman and so forth <coughs> perhaps you could clarify this for me um, shankara makes a statement which is so long as the substratum of all the non dual dharma is not seen the world seems real like the silver in mother of pearl he says is not seen the non dual dharma is obviously we can't see it is quite obvious we can't see it because we are in this world <coughs> how do you clarify something like this how how is this meant to be read what is the correct way of understanding this so here we have to correctly infer because everything everything is transitory everything is what we are having for example if you say the consciousness is in our hand we can divert the consciousness from here and there that means it is very superficial it is in our hand so it cannot be the real one Uh, sometimes it will be like this sometimes it may be like this then it cannot be the real <coughs> it is a it is a momentary one so something is beyond that uh, maybe the cause so we can rightly infer something may be the cause and but uh, so when it, when we feel the, the something real then it 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 is because the person the entity who is feeling the real is superior than the real so it is not possible so because we are the part but the whole is the real and the part cannot contain the whole but at the same we can infer something is behind ourselves the reality is there but here is even shankara itself at the end of everything he he concludes his teachings that whatever comes from the reality everything is real so we have to consider everything as real everything as brahman everything as real <laughs> so when we consider like this that means when we understand when you all the reflection in the mirror it is mirror itself <laughs> that means that is the conclusion he comes so if you both are same either way you have to take you have to take the mind as form you have to take either as a, the total mind is a light or the total mind is a shadow both are same we should not class we should not this is good light bad light there should not be any this is light and this is dark then only you know, we are classifying like this so no classification is necessary you have to put everything in a single container single as a whole uh, then only then only we will have any work there so we'll dismiss the mind itself yeah, the mother of consciousness is unconscious nature of consciousness nature, nature of real consciousness and uh, that means unconscious it's going to unconscious unconscious means we are using our consciousness we we know something only with the help of our consciousness in our hand so within the kind of what we know within the field of our consciousness that we know it is within our consciousness so what all we cannot be contained within our consciousness we can say it is unconscious, unconscious. so in this way the real consciousness is not within our the small consciousness so that is why we are saying the real consciousness is unconscious that does not mean it is uh, it is without any consciousness it is consciousness but at the same time it is not within the grip of our little consciousness means unconsciousness to consciousness state it is a nature unconscious uh, unconsciousness to consciousness is a nature unconsciousness to consciousness, consciousness. Uh, is a nature nature and uh, then whoever so, attained this jiva samadhi whether it, it's correct or not at this time so jiva samadhi is mm-hmm. different different so jiva samadhi It, it is just like a drama it actually there is no jiva samadhi it is whether it is opposite to nature just i am asking whether it's uh, it is in the nature path or uh, but it is uh, for example it is just like a to it is a, a cheating game uh, for example uh, if you <coughs> the thing is that to we about to give you a belief 
that you have to give weight, you have to give some weight to something. And the, for good reason, they are not cheating for bad reason, they are cheating you for some good reason. Mm -hmm. For they are uh, giving importance to the worship of something mm -hmm. and they create some drama mm -hmm. as if he has, uh, with living nature, he has died, with, uh, with, he has having their life forever. Mm -hmm. That is known as Jiva Samadhi. Actually, they have gone away from their body. Mm -hmm. No one cannot, no one can live within the body mm -hmm. for a certain period. But whenever they are interested, they can return to the place, yes. but they cannot live in the body for, uh, after a certain period. Mm -hmm. Some way or other, he he gone away from the body, he is not living in the body. Mm -hmm. But they, at any time he, they can return, but they show <coughs> as if they have, they are living in the body. Mm -hmm. That is, they, it is not possible. But it, they will give the impression mm -hmm. uh, to the other people that he is living in the body. If you know that natural law, then it's not recognized. Whoever is seeking for that, it's mm. not recognized. So, Just clearing up on the... When you describe consciousness, Murray's, answer Murray's question, it sounded very much to me as my understanding of, of awareness. Is, so do you the, see a difference between awareness and So the real awareness, some persons give the name awareness to the absolute reality. So it, it can be termed like this. <coughs> and in our scriptures they say Durya, Durya state. Durya, Durya state or the Atman or Sin. That is the basic structure of the consciousness. They will give the name as Durya or awareness like this. So the set cheat, the, the set would be the awareness and the cheat would be the consciousness. No, the cheat is the awareness. The cheat is the, cheat the awareness. And the set is the... Sat, sat is only the expression. Okay. So, so the, the cheat is there. What, is there anything? Cheat is there. Oh, we are saying that the cheat is there uh, as a living thing. So we are saying, actually sat, there is no, uh, apart from cheat, there is no sat. So actually the Sith alone is the real thing and Sith is there. That is the meaning of Sat. Okay, sat is the uh, existence. Is the existence the... of Sith. Uh, what is existence? Sith alone is in existence. <coughs> Sith means the awareness. Yeah. The awareness is in existence. That is the permanent, that is the real existence. Real, there is no uh, nothing in the time of real existence. So, if you, uh, existence is there, we will say, ask, what is exi what is in existence? Um, actually, the sati is not a substance. Sati is only an expression. It is an expression. It is a quality of the chit. It is a quality of the awareness. The awareness is a real thing. The awareness is really existing. That is mean by is Sat. Ananda is not in the real time of Ananda, Satchidananda, in the time of Satchidananda, the Ananda is, the real meaning of Ananda is Ananda. Ananda means infinite. So the awareness is infinite. It is, infinite means it cannot be defined. So we can <coughs> define only if it is finite. All finite things alone can be defined. So, with some boundaries, if it is has some boundary, we can define. So, we cannot define it. So, what is defined, we, what we cannot define, it, it is indefinite. It is a indigo, indefinable. Mm. So, it is beyond uh, any definition. <coughs> so, it is infinite. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you about... Uh uh, in Bhakti, they say, speak about desire to remember or to feel uh, love or infinite or God, doesn't matter the name, but there is uh, some uh, yearning, wanting for union, even if it's not uh, something total, even if you limit it, you're still <coughs> a witch, is still, a, I don't know if it's a state or some remembrance uh, that can happen in the 
in the shape of experience, like when you can feel in the heart of love, uh, something uh, infinite. So here, the part of devotion, that means if you are devoted, means you are, you are not, that means when you are devoted, you are not giving importance to you. So then only the devotion is possible. So you are losing yourself. When you lose yourself, that means, when you lose yourself, then there is no necessity to have anything for yourself. So that means, when you lose yourself, the submission is there. So you place everything in the hands of God. Here, it must end in surrender. Though <coughs> you should not take anything for yourself. You take everything for the God. You do everything uh, with the God, by the God, in that way. You are the God. So, so your, your devotion connects yourself with God. So you one with God. So you, you surrender yourself to God. So the surrender must happen. The, the, the end of bhakti is in the form of surrender. For that, the, the, but actually, normally you are having the bhakti as a, in a way of commercial basis. I, I, will, I will pray for that and he will grant prayer. <laughs> So that is uh, not surrender. So it is a claim, it is a request and getting something in return. <laughs> that is different. But uh, the real devotion is uh, being one with God. So that is uh, you will surrender yourself without any duty for yourself. Because uh, sometimes they describe it like, uh, like one thing but not wanting for something, wanting to meet, like you said. And, and there's a, it's like a baby wants to call him for his mother, that is crying. Uh, and it's something, uh, it's like an impulse. So you hear also the the baby also has some uh, interest, <coughs> self-interest. Yeah. Thereby the self-interest can be satisfied with the presence of the mother. So the, here also the self-interest gets importance. So here the real, when you have the real devotion, we should not have any self-interest. We have to submit the self-interest. We have to put everything in the hands of God. That is the end of devotion. In the beginning it may be like this. The self-interest may be the beginning. But at the end, uh, it, it must be the uh, it must be the give up of self interest. So, the um, in Vedanta, there's the Mahavakya, the Tantvamasi. Mm. That I am, I, I am that. Um, and I've, I've had in the past the impression that uh, my mind cannot know Atman, but Atman is self-knowing. Mm -hmm. So that if the mind withdraws, um, <coughs> there can be this self-knowing beings. <coughs> Um, so the unconscious can't be known by my mind, or my conscious mind. Mm -hmm. Is it wrong to think of the, of, of being the Atman, mm -hmm. then as, as a, a, a goal, or a, mm -hmm. that it's, because the, the impression I get is uh, after liberation. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's just this flowing, changing story, and I think you say in your book um, quite easily. You have no particular. Uh, you have no sense of being anywhere in particular. Um, so could you? I mean, it comes back. To who am I? So here also. Tattu Masi means the real, the real, the meaning behind the word Tattu, that, that means uh, that 
Dho means you. That is you. Uh, that is you means I am that Aham Brahmasmi, that Dho Masi, both are say Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahma. Uh, that Dho, uh, that is you. Mm. I am that, that is you, both are same. Mm. Uh, <coughs> this is one way, the, the real meaning is that both are same, you and the other is same. That is the meaning <coughs> behind that. I am and the I am the and Brahman is same, I am and God. What is I am, what is God is same. There is no difference between I am and God. God and I am is same. So there is a meaning behind that. Here, what what is the entity which is saying all those things? Mm. Is it the God saying like this? Or some entity is saying like this? Mm. So some really the some entity is saying like this. Mm. Here, when you when you are the God, even though it, it may be a wrong thing, uh, for example, you may think you are the mountain. It is not so, but you may think like that. Mm. But if you are sure that you are the mountain, then you need not go to the mountain. <laughs> then the meaning is that, even though it is not so, but you are not the mountain, mm. but if you think you are the mountain, then what, is there any necessity to go to the mountain? Mm. Because you are the mountain. Mm. So here, when you are everything, when you are the Atman, when you are the God itself, then there is no other, no necessity to go anything. Because God means everybody, everything is God. So uh, so you are the, you are in the goal. So when, when we are somebody, something other than God, we have to reach God. So when you yourself is God, there is nothing to reach, nothing to go. There is no, nowhere you have to go. So here the only thing is that you have to stop your searching, stop, stop your moving. So you are free from your uh, wandering anything. You need not seek anything. So that is the real meaning behind the words. Dardomasi, Aham Brahmasmi. That's a as a concept, because everything we can conclude through and through logical derivation or anything. For example, some we see some picture, mirror image, see our image in the mirror. We can say the image is mirror itself. There is no, it is no, there is no wrong about it. So in this way, if you take yourself as the Atman, your, even though whatever is in your in your mind, is everything is the Atman, everything is the Brahman, then there is nothing to change. Right. So the main thing is that don't change yourself. <laughs> That's the meaning. To stop the seeking. Stop, stop seeking. seeking. Stop changing. <laughs> Please come to the throne. Like. <laughs> come back to the throne. With new friends. <laughs> In some ways, yeah, this is what uh, Ramana Maharishi also says when he says Sumayir. Yes, Sumayir, <laughs> that's what. Yeah, same thing. If you are, I am saying, that's what we call the Sumayir. Yeah, yeah. What's that? Yes, Ramesh? Sumayir is a, is a Tamil phrase that Bhagavan Ramana Maharishi used. It loosely translates to simply be, just be. Just be. It is Don't a, do anything. It, Don't do anything. Set, it has a nuanced set of meanings. It is, is an attitude. And Sumayir also is. As an attitude of nonchalance, of saying, you know, just be, just, just flow. It has a, it has, it's just a, you know, many layered, uh, but loosely translated, it means simply be. Simply be. Yeah, I also wrote one book, Sumaya. No, we used, we used to joke about on that book. How to be Sumaya? None of the an action, you understand? No, no, no. See, Sumaya Suma means just be. Then if you ask a question, how to be just be? Yeah. Then it be, you have already have brought an effort in asking to clarify that. Yeah. So just be means you cannot ask any question. There is no need to answer any questions or no answers, nothing. You just be. Just be, just be. You have to apply to the psychological. Yes, yes. Psychological. Apply to the psychological, not in the <coughs> external. <laughs> And whenever we have some goal, 
some place of achievement, naturally we have to do something. We cannot be without any doing. <laughs> so you, we can be without any doing whenever there is no goal. sense of eye consciousness, the sense of I am is pretty constant. See, I'm, I'm here all the time. And, and, it, and it's the identification with, with the individual, I guess. So, but, but you're saying, because the icon, the sense of I am has to be related to thought. There has to be thought there for it to be there. So, so if I'm not seeing that coming and going, coming and going, coming and going, the eye consciousness, as you say, it's, mm. Um, does that, that mean that the thoughts are coming and going so fast that there's yeah, no recognition of it? Or is there just, or is there some effort that's being made and so the, so the, uh, the I am is making that effort? What is it that makes that sense? So that's one question. The second question about it is, I, I asked you this before, but I want to clar clarify it again. <laughs> I forgot my question. <laughs> no, we will answer the first question. Yes, okay. let, us, okay. take, let, take, let us deal with the first question. Yeah. <laughs> In the meantime, you may remind the yeah, forgotten question. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, you take the cinema. In the cinema, you, you may see some persons are running, and some persons are walking, and some persons are sitting. So whether they are walking or sitting or anything, uh, for each and every second, uh, 24 segments yes, yes. are moving. Mm -hmm. But even though, for example, the running person may demand more, but the sitting person may demand less. <laughs> Not so like that. Even though the person is sitting like that, the 24 segments must go. If the, if the, if the, as the sitting person did not uh, have the 24 segment, we can minimize the segment into somewhat uh, 12. So if you make, uh, minimize the segment, he will jump. <laughs> the sitting person will jump. We cannot uh, show the picture. So in this way, the, uh, the 24, even though we are not feeling uh, the 24 segments are running, we cannot feel the 24 segments. Right. We feel one one frame. Yeah. So in this way, even though 60 emotions coming, 60 thoughts coming repeatedly, we can feel only one thought, only one uh, recognition. Right. So you feel yourself as a constant person, even though some 60 persons are going. Sixty persons are moving, but you, you keep thinking that you are a single person. <laughs> so, 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 first of all, there's certain meditation techniques that are meant to slow things down enough so that you can actually see between the thoughts and see the thoughts arising, like Vipassana. So you can see the thoughts arising and see the thoughts following, falling, so that there's um, a distinct experience of that arising and falling, of the rising and passing away of thought. So I was wondering if that's of any value to be able to, to apply that, to see that for yourself, rather than just accept it. <coughs> So that was one question I wanted to ask, ask about that issue. So that could be a value. So here, so in the name of uh, looking in between thoughts means we are focusing our attention on that. That yeah. means the main thing is that you are focusing your attention and not uh, the objects, only your subject. 
You are the main thing is that you are doing your subject. You are your consciousness. You are directing your consciousness towards something. Yes. So the main thing is, is needed here is that you are focusing your consciousness. You are taking your consciousness in your hand and focusing some point. So you have to say you have to you have to have some point to focus. For that you select to look into the gap between thought. Yeah. So here the main thing is not that what is thought, what is the gap between thought. The main thing is that you have to do something related to your consciousness. You that means you 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 are handling with your consciousness, conscious operation. But even you are doing the conscious operation, in that conscious operation, 60 emotion and thought comes <laughs> for every each operation, for each and every second. I remember the other question. Yeah. It's still, and I, I asked it before, and I still want to get clarity about it. So the, the sense of I am is something that we can feel as an object, for sure. I wouldn't be able to say I am if I couldn't feel something or be aware of something that I can say I am. 